right? You probably think that's that old school, Old Testament stuff, right? Well, just in case, that, that's what you're thinking right now. God goes on to clarify it. Look at the next three words that he, he gives us right here. He says, or serve them. So now we're bringing it into today's context. And not that the whole Bible isn't relevant, because it is. It's relevant from Genesis to the maps. Rest assured of that. But he's really making he's really centering it in here on us today when he says, or serve them. Because he says, for I, the Lord your God, I'm a jealous God, and I'm not going to have it. So why is God saving don't serve them? It's because whatever you worship, what do you do? You serve it. Whatever you worship, you will serve. And the crazy thing is that idols take so slowly over years that you don't even notice it. It starts when you're a kid, and they build up, and they slowly come on. And it's just so slow and so gradual that we don't even realize the idols that we have in our life. So we're just like oblivious to it. And, and it just becomes your lifestyle, and it just you know, controls a large part of your time. Why? Because you're working to keep it. You're doing everything you can do to keep your stuff, right? And it controls your time. You think that's by chance? It's by design, actually. But see, if idols can control your time, then guess what? You don't have time for God. You know, there's, a, there's a statistic out there, and I think it's a lot less, actually, but 80%, probably 80% of Christians never pick up the Word of God. They never have a quiet time or a time with God or never pray to God. 80%. That means 80% of you in this room never pick up your Bible. You think that's, it is by design. Because if, however we can stay busy, all those things that keep you busy, it keeps you from a relationship with God. And it's by design. And so the second thing that we've got to understand this morning to help us guard from these things, controlling our life, is fully understand Repentance. The Apostle Paul teaches us what true repentance really is. He gives us this example right here in Romans 7, 21 through 25. He says, so I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being. In other words, in my soul, in my spirit. But I see my members, in other words, my flesh, another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members or my flesh. Okay, and then he goes on, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Here's the answer, thanks be to God. It's Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then, I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh, I serve the law of sin. So we see here the solution to our flesh. It's Jesus Christ. It's repentance. Remember, repentance is really more about following Jesus Christ. And repentance is not, again, it's not about feeling sorry for what you've done. It's not an apology. But what makes the apology repentance is exactly this. I'm walking this way, I'm headed towards all my fleshly desires, everything that holds me captive, my house, my kids, whatever that may be, addictions, and I repent from that, I turn, as I'm turning from that, I'm turning to Jesus. You see that? That's repentance. Now I'm walking in the spirit instead of my flesh. So it's like this 180 thing. That's what really repentance is. It's not about an apology at all that we make it to be. Look at 1 Corinthians 6, chapter 19 and 20, or verse 19 and 20. It sa he says, For do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You know what he's saying there? He's saying as you're engaging in your sin, whether it be some of you struggle with pornography or adultery or whatever it is, he's, he's literally saying, do you not understand that you have the Holy Spirit of God inside you you got that when you became a christian you were literally dragging the holy spirit of god into that sin with you that's what he's saying there he goes on to say for you were bought with a price so glorify god in your your body you see jesus shedding his blood on the cross was the highest price that could be paid for our sins so the next time you you know you struggle with engaging in a sin or whatever it is you you, you, you struggle with the next time you engage in that, try picture Jesus on the cross and see how that works for you. Amen? So I'm going to leave you guys this last analogy and I'm done. You know, in spiritual warfare, if you feed the flesh, the flesh gets stronger. 
if you feed your spirit, your spirit will get stronger. It's like the analogy, and maybe you've heard this before, you know, the analogy of the white dog, black dog, you know, which one's stronger? Well, whichever one you feed the most. You feed that black dog, you know, you feed him, and he'll be the strongest one. If you don't feed the white dog, he's not the strongest one. It's the same analogy. Same thing with our spirit, same thing with our flesh. Whatever you're putting into your life, guys, what are you feeding? That's the question that we have to ask ourselves. That's the question I've been thinking about the whole time through this service. What am I spending all my time doing? What's controlling my life? What's driving my life? Is it really Jesus Christ? Because here's why. One day, one day we're all going to have to stand and give an account of our life before God. Did you know that this morning? Maybe some of you guys are new Christians and maybe nobody's ever told you that before. You see, there's a judgment that's coming for people who deny Jesus Christ as their Savior. And I'm not talking about that judgment. That's the great white throne judgment. That's reserved for people, you know, that have never trusted Jesus Christ as a Savior. But for us as Christians, hey, we don't get to escape totally free. You see, there's a verse that tells us in Romans 14, 10 through 12. He says, he says do you pass judgment on your brother or you? Why do you despise your brother? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us will give an account of God. So you're going to have to stand before a holy and righteous God one day. Not, you don't have to give an account for your sin. That's why Jesus Christ died on the cross. He paid for your sins. He paid for our crimes. We don't have to. The Bible says that he has cast those as far as the east is from the west. Thank God we don't have to give an account for that. But what you will have to give an account for is how you spent your time as a Christian. What did you do with the abilities and the gifts that God gave you to glorify him? Because God said, we're supposed to worship him and nothing else. And so on that day, that's the day that we're going to have to stand before God and give an account of our lives. And so I'm going to leave you with that analogy. And I don't say that to guilt you. I, I just say that, man, we need to have that just that check inside of ourselves, that conversation with ourselves. You know, what am I living for? You know, am I living for God? Or what, what are the things that control my life? What is it I spend all my time doing? Every head bowed and every eye closed. We're just going to go to the Lord in prayer. And Father, we come to you, Lord God, today. And, and Lord, we need help, Lord, because in and of ourselves, we cannot do this. Lord, without you, Lord, we're done. We're, we're nothing, Lord. And our, our flesh is just so much stronger so many times that there's so many things in this world that tug us. There's so many things that captivate our eyes, Lord, and our attention that draw us away from you. And those things become our gods, Lord, because we serve them, Lord. And Lord, we want to worship you, the true and living God, the uncreated God. So God, would you help us to do that, Lord? And Father, as we leave this building today, Father, Lord, just don't let this be another message that was heard and received, but a message that's put into action, God. Lord, would you help us search our souls, Father God, and find out what, what is it that keeps me from serving? Why is it that I don't spend time with you? Why is it that I don't spend time in your word? Why is it that I never tell anybody about Jesus Christ? How come I'm not living a life that glorifies you, Lord? Help us to do these things, Father. Would you give us the strength through the power in your word, Lord, to accomplish these great things that you have created us to do, Father? And Lord, for that one that's here today that has never trusted Jesus Christ, I pray, God, that today, Lord, they will confess you as Lord. And so while every head bowed and every, while every eye is closed, I'm just wondering, is there anybody here that wants to receive Jesus Christ, as God's free gift of eternal life today? Anybody at all? For the first time, man, you, you've never prayed that prayer, you've never asked Jesus Christ. Or maybe you prayed that prayer, but you've never experienced any life change in your life. You prayed a prayer, but your life didn't change. I just wonder if there's anybody in this room that would be willing to ask for Jesus Christ to come into your life and save you today. I'm not going to call you up here. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm just going to pray for you. That's all we're going to do. Anybody at all. Well, Father, again, we thank you for allowing us to be here this morning, Lord. And would you strengthen us by your power? Lord, we love you and we praise you. And we thank you for your word that pierces our heart that becomes a mirror so that we see ourselves as you see us, God. Lord, help us in Jesus' name.
Amen, amen. I want to thank all you guys for coming out today. You guys have been great. And uh, man, I pray, just go out there and live your life to make a difference. Amen. Hey, I'll be down here. I'd love to meet you. Pastor Eric would love to meet you. You guys have a great weekend. Once again, we want to thank you for joining us here for one of our inspiring messages at Journey Church. If you live in the greater Jacksonville area, we want to invite you to come out to one of our weekend experiences. Our service times are Saturday night at 6 p.m., Sunday at 9.30 a.m., or 11.15 a.m. Or if you would like to, you can join us online at any time watching any of our services live at journeychurch.org. We look forward to seeing you next time.